Ezekiel chapter 23. And as we talked about yesterday when we read through this chapter, it is a very explicit uh, picture that God is going to paint of his relationship with Samaria and Jerusalem. And he's going to call in verse 4, Samaria Ahola and Jerusalem Aholiba. He's going to describe them as sisters, and yet adulterous sisters, who are going to cheat on him not just once, but over and over and over again. And he is going to talk about the relationship that he's had with Samaria and Jerusalem. And he's actually going to take it back all the way to the days of Israel as a united people coming out of the land of Egypt. And he's going to talk about this relationship over the course of a thousand years uh, as you see these things unfolding and transpiring uh, in the course of this chapter. Now, he's not going to go into names and dates and all of those kinds of things, but he's going to talk about how that the unrighteousness and the, the adulterous behavior has gone all the way back to the time when they were in Egypt. There's going to be a parallel here between what Samaria did. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. Remember that at the time that God speaks this to Ezekiel, the northern kingdom of Israel has not existed for some 140 years at this point. And so it's been over a century since Samaria was the capital of anything. And that's part of the point, is Samaria was sent into captivity long before because of her actions, and Jerusalem has actually managed to exceed the wickedness and the idolatry of where Samaria was when she was sent into captivity. So let's look at a few things that we can see and that we can learn from Ezekiel chapter 23. We've talked about the fact that he uses the names Ahola and Aholiba. And Ahola is going to reference Samaria. Aholiba is going to reference Jerusalem. In verse number 11, after dealing with the actions of Ahola, uh, you're going to see, and the judgment that comes upon her, you're going to see that he makes this statement. Now, although her sister Aholiba saw this, she became more corrupt in her lust than she, and in her harlotry, more corrupt than her sister's harlotry. Jerusalem saw what happened to Samaria. And as a matter of fact, the things that happened to Samaria came during times when uh, Jerusalem had good kings on the throne, and they, they had the times where they knew what was going on and what God expected of them, and they were trying to move the people to righteousness. And yet the people would not go. Sometimes they would have good kings such as Hezekiah and Josiah, and yet the hearts of the people would not fully be turned away from their wickedness, from their idolatry. They did not learn from the actions of Samaria. Instead, they replicated them and sought to take them to the next level. And that is what he's going to spend the next number of verses talking about is how Jerusalem went after all of these other nations. She wanted to be like and associated with all of these other nations. But even beyond all of that, she wanted to worship their idols. She wanted to become a part of their religious spectrum as well. And so because of that, God tells the, Jerusalem in verse 32, You shall drink of your sister's cup, the deep and wide one. You shall be laughed to scorn and held in derision. It contains much. The exact same thing is going to happen to you that happened to Samaria. Now, there is going to be a distinction because Jerusalem is not going to be gone forever as a as a major city, a major thoroughfare, or even as a considered capital, but some, like Samaria was. However, they are. it is going to go away, and there is going to be major destruction of people and property in the region, and it is no longer going to be its own entity under its own control. And so there is going to be this punishment that is going to come down because they have forgotten 
who they belong to. And they have forgotten what happened to their sister. But I want you to notice in verse 37, as you examine what it is that God says in indicting Jerusalem as to how it was that she was worse, one of the areas that you notice is that Samaria, as you go through and you read the history of the northern kingdom, the overwhelming majority of the children of Israel, once they left serving God under Jeroboam, they never came back. They never even made the pretense of trying to do what was right or of trying to follow God. God would send prophets like Elijah and others to the northern kingdom, but they always fell on deaf ears. They, they never were willing to even truly consider turning back to God. Jerusalem was different. In verse 37, God says, For they have committed adultery, and blood is on their hands. They have committed adultery with their idols, and even sacrificed their sons, whom they bore to me, passing them through the fire to devour them. Moreover, they have done this to me. They have defiled my sanctuary on the same day, and profaned my Sabbaths. For after they had slain their children and their idols on the same day, they came into my sanctuary to profane it. And indeed, thus they have done in the midst of my house. I want you to get the picture of what it is that he is saying. In Jerusalem, what they would do is they would go out and they would sacrifice their children as living human offerings and burn them alive to idols. And then in the afternoon, they would go into the temple and proclaim that they were worshiping God. They wanted to have it always. They wanted to be able to do what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it. And then come in and say a few words of obeisance toward God and that be sufficient. That everybody would be happy. You know, we've got a lot of people today that have the same mentality. They can go out and they can do whatever it is they want to do during the week. They can go out and they can live however they want to live from day to day. Or they can even go out in the morning and do what they want to do as long as they come in and go to services once a week. Or that they can live however they want to as long as they then put up the front of caring about what God says which is exactly what Jerusalem did. You know, it, it didn't work for Samaria to disregard God. It didn't work for Jerusalem to pretend to regard God. It won't work for us either. He concludes the chapter as he has concluded so many chapters previously by saying, Then you shall know that I am the Lord God. Do we? Does it show that we know by our actions? Or are we playing religion like Jerusalem was? Those are some of the lessons from Ezekiel chapter 23. When we come back tomorrow, Lord willing, we will examine chapter 24. But until then, have a great day.